The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise Him. My Father's God, and I will exalt Him. Great is our Lord, and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. In Him was life, and His life brought light to everyone. has come to set all people free, to rid the world of darkness and shine the light of Jesus to all who dwell on this earth. May you do your work in us and through us. As bearers of your image, 
may we shine forth the goodness and mercy of Christ, doing the work of the kingdom through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello and welcome to another Sunday with Shiloh Community Church from Seelys Bay. Uh, as it happens, we had our first uh, service of 2021 outdoors and uh, we're so very thankful for those who could attend. Uh, the whole intention was for me to uh, record our service, but we had some technical glitches, so that didn't work out for us. But I'm going to try to uh, recreate the sermon that I spoke about this morning and uh, bring it to you but I'm glad you're here and uh, we are planning every Sunday to have our ser services available to you and so I hope you'll keep watching if you have any questions or concerns please check in on our website at uh, www.shilohcommunitychurch.ca and uh, we would love to hear from you and uh, anyway, I always have a little cute story for you. And this morning I have a couple of them. The first one is a story that's told about two men who were riding a tandem bicycle up a steep hill. Well, after much effort, they finally made it to the top of the hill. The front rider said that was a tough ride. To which the second rider replied, sure was. And if I hadn't kept the brake on, we might have slipped backwards. Yeah, a lot of hard work for nothing, right? Anyway, the second one is the story is told about a pastor who uh, got up into the pulpit and apologized for the Band-Aid on his face. And so he said, I was thinking about my sermon while shaving and I cut my face. Well, af afterward, the treasurer found a note in the offering plate and it said, next time, think about your face and cut the sermon. I'm sure some people feel that way and I hope that I don't have you bored by the end of this but this is um, something that uh, I've uh, found very important to talk about and uh, when we do I think you'll realize why in the scripture that we're going to be using this morning is from Matthew 7 verses 15 to 21 that's Matthew 7 verses 15 to 21, and I will be using the New Living Translation for this passage. Are you ready? Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn brushes and figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name 
and perform miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us a beautiful day. I thank you for the beauty of your creation and the fact that we can see the different colors and the textures and the beauty of what you created this world for us to enjoy. Lord, we realize that we live in an age where there is so much going on that can mess us up. And I just pray that you will help us today to be able to hear from you. And I pray that you will use your servant, Lord, to speak what you want to be said. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the first thing I want to tackle is the very first verse. And it says, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. Now, Matthew, in the book of Matthew, and in this I've got the ES, ESV, sorry, Matthew 24, 24, and it says, For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. 2 Peter 2, 1 says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, who bought them, sorry, bringing upon themselves swift dest destruction. First John 4, 1 to 6 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For Many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in, the flesh is from God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now in the world already. Little children, you are up from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he that who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. Now these are pretty powerful scriptures, and this is um, the reason that I will often say, know your Bible. Don't just wait for Sunday morning to hear a scripture reading, but get into it. And read it. And if you find it challenging to do, just do a few verses a day. Just do something. Read until you find something that challenges you. Um, maybe you are a power reader and you like to read through. Well, do it, but read through it a couple of times just to make sure that you comprehend what the scripture is saying. And if you don't know what the scripture is saying, research it. I mean, we have the ability through the internet, etc., to do that. But knowing what the word of God will help you to stay free of false teaching because you know what the word of God says. And today we have a lot of false prophets um, who are very much about the authority of leadership rather than the surrender to God. The reason they are able to deceive people is that we don't know our scripture well enough so that when people say things about God that sound right, that are close to the truth, but they are not the truth. Have you ever heard the expression that the greatest lie is the one that is the closest to the truth? It's easy to be deceived. Now, for example, today we have this movement called the Word of Faith Movement. And at the heart of the Word of Faith Movement is the belief of force of faith. It is believed that words can be used to manipulate the faith force and thus actually create what they believe Scripture promises. And they believe Scripture promises health and wealth, and you will know this as prosperity preaching. That means if you follow Jesus, then everything that's good in life is going to come to you. They believe that laws supposedly governing the faith force are said to operate independently of God's sovereign will, and that God himself 
is it subject to these laws? This is nothing short, people, of idolatry. It's turning our faith and by extension ourselves into God. That is so wrong. And from there, it's theology. It just strays further and further from scripture. It claims that God created human beings in his literal physical image as little gods. Therefore, um, before the fall, humans had the potential to call things into existence by using the faith force. This is what they really believe. And after the fall, they believe that humans took on Satan's nature and lost the ability to call things into existence. So in order to correct this situation, Jesus Christ gave up his divinity and became a man. He died spiritually, took Satan's nature upon himself, went to hell, was born again, and rose from the dead with God's nature. After this, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to replicate the incarnation in believers so they could become little gods as God had originally intended. Be listen, or sorry, be wise about who you listen to. Be wise as to who you follow. There are so many that appear that they are close to the truth, but these are lies and you need to be careful. Now, some followers of Word of Faith would be Kenneth Copeland is one of the big ones, Joyce Meyer, um, Hillsong United. These are all part of the Word of Faith movement. And I could go on and go on and go on and list ones. And I was, I was shocked to hear of some of them that are involved in this. And I'm not saying that good messages don't come. I mean, we certainly know that Hillsong uh, produces really great music, which brings people in. But we have to be careful about who we're listening to. And we have to measure everything up against the word of God. And that includes what I tell you. I'm a human being. I pray that the Holy Spirit uses me um, to bring his message to you. But I am not God. I am far from it. I'm imperfect. I am human. God is good and he is real. And the teaching that is coming from this particular group is false. Just because a group uses the name Jesus doesn't mean they actually believe he is who scripture said he is. So please be careful and know the word. Now we're going to go into a little bit of a different direction right now. We're going into uh, the, the verse that says, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Okay, this is important. How many of you have been in the church and seen behaviors from people that you thought they call themselves Christian? We have to be so careful and so cautious about this. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. James 3, 17 says, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and, and sincere. Colossians 1, 10 says, So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Matthew 12, 33 says, either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad for the tree is known by its fruit. And the last verse I want to share along this line is from Philippians 1, 11. 
And it says, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus to the glory and praise of God. You see, you want to see the fruits of the Spirit in people in leadership and in people who are growing in their faith. It's not about them. It's about God. And, you know, one of the most beautiful people I knew was a pastor's wife. And by the time I got to know them, they were both retired. But this woman, I went to visit her when she was 100 years old. And I said to her, her name was Lulu Moffat, and I said to her, Mrs. Moffat, I hope that someday I can have the kind of faith you have and be just like you. And she said to me, oh, dear. I have so far to go. And my thought was, if you have a long way to go, then there's no hope for me. But the thing that I saw in her was a woman who was known in the community by her generosity, by her kind nature, by her caring spirit, by her gentleness. She was known for putting meals on for people. The Her coconut cream pies were what were renowned in, in the village. She would have children in to teach them about Jesus. And that woman was peace personified. You see, we, there was an old song back in the, six, the 70s that said they will know we are Christians by our love. And that's the way it should be. Is that, that we should be known by the love by the peace, by the joy, by the compassion and care that we have for others. The reason people are leaving the church in droves is that they're not experiencing the fruits of the Spirit in its people. You cannot get to heaven by earning your salvation. It's not by works, lest any man should boast, but by the grace of God that we have and we are who we are. You see, it's not in what, or sorry, I want to go on to the next piece of scripture that says, starting at verse 21, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. The enemy says I'm done, I lift my praises. But my world comes crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. I choose to worship, I choose you now. Yeah, when the enemy says I'm done, I lift my praises. When my world comes crashing down, I lift my praises high. Till the darkness turns to dawn, I lift my praises. I choose to worship. I choose you now. Let's choose him, church. I choose to worship, I choose to bow. Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down. Here in the conflict, when doubt surrounds, 
Though my soul is unraveling, I choose you now. I will praise you through the fire, through the storm and through the flood. There is nothing that could ever steal my soul. In the valley, you are worthy. You are good when life is not. You will always and forever be my soul. I build my own right here and now. And in the midst of the darkest night, it won't burn out. For you are perfect, no matter what. In the joy of the suffering, I sing it loud. I will praise you through the fire, through the storm and through the flood. There is nothing that could ever steal my soul. In the valley, you are worthy. You are good when life is not. You will always and forever be my soul. Let's choose it right here and right now when the enemy says we're done when our world comes crashing down we've still got a song to sing in every season and circumstance we have a song to sing we won't let the enemy steal it we won't let our circumstances steal it he is still good when life is not that's our proclamation that's our declaration wherever we are let's declare it together that we choose to worship right here and right now when the enemy 